We're here with Millennium Live at the Digital Transformation East Assembly in Charlotte. And I'm lucky enough to be joined by our friends, Vince Campitelli and John Michael Brook from Cloud Security Alliance. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks for having us. So you. could you guys just start and tell you know, our members and our viewers you know, a little bit more about the Cloud Security Alliance and how you help you know, the industry? I was going to say that's a great question for you, but uh, you know the Cloud Security Alliance. Is, we just celebrated our tenth year at RC, uh, RSA in uh, in San Francisco, uh, and we're still holding true to the original mission of the Cloud Security Alliance when when we were formed, and that is to provide. Uh, continued guidance on security and compliance issues related to organizations that uh, desire to adopt cloud computing as part of their technology solutions and framework. Uh, we also have a class of members that uh, basically consist of the cloud service providers to help them in understanding what are the expectations of their customers as they uh, start to acquire cloud services. What are they looking for from the cloud service providers? Well, they it's and in, in those ten years, it's also expanding out past uh, just pure cloud, like IaaS, PaaS, SaaS. We're going into covering things like Internet of Things, blockchain, DevOps, ancillary services that are necessary or helped out by cloud and you know the privacy level agreement uh, with the EU and the GDPR, mm -hmm. um, those kinds of aspects are also where uh, CSA has focused research. So on the global you know, business spectrum, uh, where do you think you know, we are on the journey of having everything data operations um, stored in the cloud? Are we you know, all the way there or is there, is there more to come? I think there's definitely more to come. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, one of the major cloud providers, however, has over a million customers. So I think you can say uh, safely that it's it's uh, maturing as a uh, as a solution set. Uh, I believe I've seen some recent surveys which would indicate that over 87 percent of the organizations that were included in this survey, which was a broad survey. Uh, 80% of those organizations have adopted some form of, of a cloud solution provider as part of their technology platform. Uh, we see, uh, Nick, more and more organizations adopting uh, cloud first and some even okay. adopting a cloud only strategy. And, you know, John Michael, you, you do a lot of work with this, um, you know, the top threats, you know, year to year. Um, I know you know the the top threats for 2019 has been extremely valuable you know to our to our members. Um, can you share a little bit more you know about how you do it, but also you know what are you know what are the top threats and people need to be concerned? Yeah, you know, sure. So thinking about the uh, the top threats. Uh, it's a working group within the uh, Cloud Security Alliance, mm -hmm. and it's a member driven organization. So we send out a survey to the 87 88 thousand members and say hey you know what are the what are the biggest risks to your organization right now and predominantly i mean they'll come back with things so we we we, we queue it up with uh 20 to 25 topics and say hey rank these in importance mm -hmm. and you know predominantly for the past uh we've been doing it for since 2010 uh data breach has i mean that that yep. is the overwhelming uh problem that everybody's facing right but um each year or every two years, we uh, perform the survey and we uh, rank what, what those are and we give them a catchy title. And, you know, again, it's risks uh, a little more than just top threats, but it is out there. And uh, we had the, uh, the let's see, seven sins, uh, the notorious nine, the treacherous 12, and we'll see what this one is, but I'm hoping uh, either. Give me some suggestions on uh, rhyming with eight or eleven. L let me get back to you. Right, right. <laughs> um, but you know, obviously, you know, the d privacy and data has been, you know, it, it wasn't a good year for the industry. There was, you know, a lot of pushback, you know, and some huge enterprises. Um, what do you think is you know, the biggest challenge, you know, especially in the cloud, you know, managing customer, consumer, employee? 
um, you know, data. What's the biggest challenge? Yeah. I think trying to do things the way that you did on within your enterprise. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is a different mindset when you're dealing with cloud. Um, you have to yield several responsibilities to your cloud service provider. You're expecting that they do things better than you do in some instances, such as power, mm -hmm. you know, uh, guard, guard duty, you know, uh, rack and stack. Those aren't things that really bring you much benefit um, as an organization. And so you hand those off to the cloud service provider and then they expect you to take care of things like securing your data, yeah. <laughs> putting it into a, a, an environment that will actually keep it up and running, an architecture that's cloud native that will actually you know, allow someone to uh, uh, expect a, a, an uptime in the high 90s rather than you know, something that's going out a couple of times a, a, a day. I think you could also add to that, Nick, that uh, one, of the, one of the timely benefits of using cloud is the uh, online real-time ability to scale up and scale down uh, based upon business necessity. Yeah. And, and so in the age of consumerism, the acquisition of information, the use of information, the analysis of information is, is a highly desirable capability and feature set. At the same time, large organizations have developed, discerned that by using cloud technologies, they, they can economically manage now. One, the timeliness of having those huge pools of resources available, and then the utility of using those huge resources to get better analytics. And that's why you see the, uh, you know, the rapid development and adoption of things like machine learning, yeah. artificial intelligence, companies see that there's a lot of potential revenue acquisition by using those techniques. And so one feeds the other. Yeah. And that's why, you know, companies want to use more and more and acquire more and more data. They have to store that data. They have to process that data. They can now do it economically and try then and de develop new and important services, you know, that their customers are expecting. Totally. What do you think is the biggest challenge for, you know, the C-suite executive managing their cloud infrastructure, uh, you know, in 2019 and looking ahead to 2020? Finding talent. I mean, finding clouds, cloud talent, yeah. and finding cloud talent that's appropriate to whatever solutions that that particular executive is planning on rolling out. So be that, you know, they're using a software as a service, actually knowing that particular uh, SaaS backwards huh. and forwards. If it's, you know, pulling into an Azure or a Google Cloud or an AWS, finding folks that are knowledgeable in that particular service and then if they're looking at multi-cloud capabilities, which you know everybody wants that next step in re resiliency, finding somebody that, that knows you know, two of those, much less all three, is going to be, well, the proverbial uh, needle unicorn in the haystack. Yeah. And you know, here at the assembly, there's been a lot of talk, you know, and this is actually a good point, um, about you know, the, the culture and the team. Um, and you know, finding developing the talent. Um, I know. Could you just tell a little bit more, you know, about some of the like trainings you know you guys do? Is it as much with the executives, or is it with their teams that they're building? So principally, as far as the uh, the training that uh, I'm actually one of the trainers for the CSA. Yeah. Uh, there's a hands-on cloud security uh, intro class. Um, there's a, uh, a governance compliance uh, class. Uh, let's see, we're calling that, uh, well, cloud governance and compliance. <laughs> um, and so we've got, uh, uh, those are going to be principally the practitioners. Yep. Um, but I've had CISOs go through those courses at Black Hat and RSA uh -huh. successfully. I mean, they're sharp guys. So, you know, it's not like uh, we're, we're, we're telling them to go set up a multi-million dollar uh, facility Instead, it's, hey, let's set up an application and show some of the principles behind what it is that you're doing. So from that standpoint, um, I think there's benefit to all involved uh, that, that, that actually attend. And I mean, the, the survey results have typically shown that out. And it also you know, means that the CISO is you know, in the trenches and you know, 
and engaged, not just you know delegating and you know be, being part of the culture. Additionally, we've got uh, uh, classes or not classes, but webinars and things like that that you could also put into that training bucket. The Cloud Byte seminars, uh, several of the uh, working groups that participation that. Um, uh, several of those are going to be more focused up the uh, executive suite as well. I think it is important, uh, to your point, uh, for the C-suite and, and ultimately the board as well to be educated on what does this paradigm shift to the cloud really mean for, for your business. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, you know, the old adage about what got you here won't get you there. So yeah. at, if the end state is to have the vast majority of your tech of your technology platforms in the cloud you really need to understand as a c-suite executive how does that translate into the role of the traditional on-premise cio to now to now a cio who has nothing on premise everything is in the cloud they yeah. still have a responsibility to deliver new services and automated processes uh, and, and enhance, cu enhance customer support for the company, but they're not going to do it with their own technology. So in the future, they really have to fully understand how do they take advantage of their cloud providers. Part of it is strategic. What is the best cloud provider to use in what situation and, and actually be capable of managing a portfolio of cloud providers, mm -hmm. each, you know, to, to extract the best you know, the most effective degree of value out of cloud, pro cloud provider B versus cloud provider A. And, and explain that, be able to explain that rather to the board as to why they're making those decisions and their cloud strategy, you know, will consist of managing multiple cloud providers and how do they take advantage of that whole portfolio. Very interesting. So switching gears a little bit, you know, we've been here in Charlotte. Uh, we've been fortunate to, to work with you guys on Cloud Security Lines for a couple of years now. Um, you know, here at the, this assembly, what would you say is, you know, your number one takeaway from, you know, the conversations and sessions you've been part on, you know, with the executives here? It's been the networking. I mean, just the, the, the wide range of folks that are that, that are at these uh, events and, and all of their viewpoints have been very, I mean, they've been very telling. I, I've, I've come up with uh, folks from pretty much every industry and, you know, talking to somebody with uh, within the healthcare space versus the finance sector versus commercial. I mean, there's a couple of government guys out there. I mean, it's, it's from, from the perspective of just that wide range of viewpoints, mm -hmm. it's very nice. Uh, to, to me, the insights have, have been uh, fascinating in that uh, from the various, very, very smallest of organizations who attend the assembly to the very largest of organizations, uh, the adoption rate of using cloud as a technology solution set, uh, if you will, you know, continues to, uh, you know, continues to fascinate me. All. I'd say the last, the vast majority of organizations that have attended are all using cloud of some sort. The, the, the larger and larger scale organizations are using it much more effectively and at much greater scale. But even even your larger constituents are basically finding out that the cloud can solve a lot of their historical problems about how to grapple with technology and 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 be able to take advantage of both the economies and the agility that cloud providing provides. Interesting. Um, and why do you think it's important, you know, the CTO, the CEO, you know, from, as you said, John Michael, the wide range of industries um, to, you know, partner with the Millennium Alliance, with Cloud Security Alliance, and come to an assembly like this? Because you've got practitioners that have a, a, a hands-on, have gone through the same problem that, that every one of them uh, has gone through. I mean, they're, they're, what they're grappling with at that exact moment in time, it, it's it's been surprising, not surprising, but um, they seem surprised that 
you know, the guy that's sitting next to them just had that same exact issue with ransomware or just had that same issue with, uh, with somebody clicking on an email link and, hey, how did you fix it? Oh, well, I used this and I did this and, well, well, try calling these people. Yeah. And, and so that, uh, that real world experience, that hands on, uh, you know, somebody that has been in the trenches is in the same uh, shoes as you are. Um, it, it seems to carry over very well, and I'm, I'm sure that they're pulling quite a bit of information out of one another. I would say, uh, Nick, what I think what many organizations have come to realize that, uh, number one, uh, it's a strategic, of impar a strategic impar imperative if their organizations are going to stay competi competitive and viable that they have to transform themselves. And that means, you know, digital transformation. As soon as you adopt that strategy, that will then force you into encountering how will cloud fill, fit into that solution set. And whether you're going to use the cloud to push your legacy systems just to operate them while you're investing in, in the net new, yep. or, or whether you're going to use the cloud for the net new and you use your on-prem solutions to maintain your legacy systems, for example, you can then develop a strategy over time as your legacy systems go away, your on-prem solution, you know, footprint continues to get smaller and smaller, and you're building all the net new to, to work in the new technology, in the new environments where you really can take, take advantage of the economies of scale, of the ability, you know, to spin up and spin down new assets, or, you know, in, in a heartbeat. And, and basically to take advantage of, you know, the agility that, that you're, that you, that's being fostered, you know, by rapid development and by rapid, uh, you know, change processes, which meets the needs of the business, which wants mm -hmm. to readily adapt and build new services and new products and, and continue to, to evolve that, uh, you know, that, that, uh, that process. Interesting. All right, so I've got a couple of rapid fire questions for you guys. Um, what... What industry do you see or business sector is leading digital transformation the best at the moment? Is it healthcare, is it finance, commercial? I'd say retail. I mean, they're, they're able to utilize the, the, the whole idea of the startup, you know, Facebook for instance, yep. you know, Instagram, all of these companies, Zynga, they get to just throw stuff out there, see what sticks. The cloud really doesn't put that much of a, uh, a, a cost out there you know, an initial cost outlay, it moves from that capital expense to an operational expense environment. If they're not making money, they don't pay anything. So from that standpoint, it, it stretches their dollars a little bit further and gives them the opportunity to, again, see what sticks and, and grow the business. All right, Vince, this one's for you. What, uh, what's the biggest, you know, concern for the C-suite executive, you know, in, in cyber and cloud security this year? What's keeping them up? I'd say the age-old issue of uh, a data breach. Yeah. Uh, number one, followed by GDPR, and then and then the evolving, uh, if you will, r rising tide of uh, privacy issues akin to GDPR, but applied to, to the U.S. You know, with the recent California Privacy Act, mm -hmm. uh, it's becoming much more of a component and an issue. Recent Wall Street you know, Wall Street Journal articles about the stage of how we're protecting people's information, whether it's health information, personal information, or credit card information, it, it's becoming much more of, of, of a daily uh, topic that executives have to be concerned about. Are they meeting their customers' expectations, and are they being held as trustworthy stewards of the information they're collecting? I'd, I'd throw on top of that, in addition to that data breach idea, I mean, you're seeing the, uh, the denial of service that goes along with a, uh, a ransomware event. Um, Hydro Aluminum today just got hit, yep. and that took out, uh, I mean, they're, they're going back to the 1800s ways of refining, you know, metal. And so there is no, you know, checking the, checking the thermostats on the, uh, on the boiling. It, it's, they are going back that far in, in history because they lost their computing capability because of a, a, a ransomware event, which, you know, it's another denial of service, so. Yeah. What, uh, you know, from threat to, let's be a bit more, you know, positive, what technology is exciting you the most at the moment? 
personally, it's AI. I, I, I think the machine learning and, and AI in general, um, I think those have some pretty significant advantages. I mean, look, we can't think of everything. Yeah. We don't have the interest. I mean, I'd rather go watch a sports game occasionally or, you know, spend some time with the kids rather than uh, <laughs> try to come up with if then else statements in, uh, in, in my head. So yeah. letting, uh, letting a, an AI or a machine learning take care of that, I'd, I'd be much happier to, to see that evolve. Clearly, I think it's the creative use, the creative use of data and the creation of, of new data elements that organizations can monetize and find new value propositions uh -huh. to better need, better to better need, meet the needs of their consumers and customers, but then also create new needs, you know, for their customers. You know, for example, telling them what book they might like to read in the future based upon the last ten books they read or what television shows they would like to see, and then the creatives start building tele television or, or streaming shows to fit that need based upon a, a solid body of evidence that says this is what people like to see, mm -hmm. you know, in this age group or, or in this gender or, or in this ethnic group. So capturing that information and then knowing with a high degree of probability that you're going to have consumers who are interested in that Okay, it helps you refine the process. L much lower, much lower, much lower the risk of you know you're going to develop a bomb that no one wants to see because you already have a lot of good audience information that this is oh, these are the things they want to see. Yeah. So um, we've been lucky, as we mentioned, we've been lucky enough to partner with Cloud Security Alliance for the last couple of years. What do you um, you know, really see as a benefit um, of partnering with the Millennium Alliance, you know, with Cloud Security Alliance and also, you know, with the, with the industry? Well, I, th I think it certainly helps us uh, in, a, in an effective way because uh, we're in learning environments, we're in trusted environments, we're in environments where uh, there's a degree of quality about the competency and the skill sets and the experience of people sitting around the table and we can help educate them on what we have developed and how they may be able to better use and consume that information of, 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 that we are providing to the marketplace. So I, I think it's a win-win because we're working side by side with people that you are attracting who are trying to deal with the same technology issues. One component of being successful you know, is the adoption, the absorption, and the effective use and deployment of, of cloud computing. And last one, this is going to be a really hard hitting one for both of you. What do you enjoy most about, you know, individually and collectively about partnering with, you know, and working with the Millennium Alliance? I mean, you guys are a top notch organization. It, it's, it's Thank you. been, uh, been put forth out there. This is the third event that I've worked with uh, or worked with you guys at, and every one of them have been just off the charts. So the level of competency for the individuals that have been there, um, fantastic. I mean, you don't have any dull pencils in the box, yeah. which is a, a, a nice change. I mean, I've been in the industry for quite a while, and there are times when I'm the dull pencil. But <laughs> you know, this is this is one of those where it's it, it's nice seeing a uh, a level of, of sophistication of your attendees and, and working with you guys is a pleasure. Well, I, I think you have a laser type focus on the same group of individuals that we want to get access to to help educate. And you have a great forum for that. It's done in a very comfortable setting, yeah. uh, very supportive setting. Uh, you know, your, your people know how to put on good assemblies and effective assemblies. You know how to attract the right people. And uh, we like showing up where we can just take advantage of that presence and, and that audience uh, because if not, you know, we'd just be sending out emails to organizations saying, you know, we can help you with our guidance. It's a much more effective way for us to reach our intended audience. So I, I think, you know, just to me, it's just a win-win. Yeah, it's an absolute benefit for, you know, to be able to bring in, you know, the experts to, you know, help with the education and the training for the executives. Um, and, you know, Vince, John Michael, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for you know, the ongoing partnership with Cloud Security Alliance and, you know, and our friendship as well. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Been a pleasure. Thanks. <laughs>